Here we are with eight weird, unique, fun, and janky builds in Elden Ring. Welcome to the video, you dirty jabronis. Let's jump right into it. Starting off, number eight, the Vampire Knight. This setup has a specific combination, combining lifesteal and successive attacks. And with this, you can go around fisting everything in sight. First of all, we have the Zombie Bones, with the classic lifesteal weapon art. The lifesteal Ash of War recently got buffed, so it's actually viable now. These bad boys scale mainly with dexterity and arcane for the weapon art. On smaller, less tanky enemies, these bones are quite deadly. But obviously, this will not work on all enemies. That's why we also have the Keen Flam Burge, using Blood Tax. First of all, Blood Tax robs the target of both their blood and their HP, recovering some of your own health back. But also, the Flam Burge comes with Innate Bleed. So if we go Keen Infused for max attack power, plus add Blood Flame, we got a deadly flurry of bloody flames. We're using the Flam Burge in our main hand, and the Zombie Bones in our left. Short of Alexander, the Dagger Talisman, Millicent's, then Bulgold's Talisman. The extra poise is actually really important because one big downfall of lifesteal is getting slapped out of it. So you want that poise to tank through attacks while using the weapon art. In our mixed drink, we got Magic Shrouded Crack Tier and the Successive Attack Crack Tier. The Magic Boost is good because lifesteal actually uses magic damage. So boosting magic will make the skill more powerful. Next up, we have a Rotten Nightmare. Oh yeah, we got a lot going on with this one. So the point of this build is to inflict Scarlet Rot and Poison in weird and interesting ways. So the first option is to put them to sleep, then inflict the Rot and Poison. Sleep them, then Rot them. Sleep pots work very well, but we also got St. Trina's Torch. The weapon art blows sleepy fire around, then once they snoozing, then you get a free chance at Poison Mist, then Slice and Dice. Our weapon of choice here is Dual Ansper Rapiers. In the main hand, we have Blood Infused for Scarlet Rot and Bleed Buildup, but then using the Poison Mist Ash of War. Then in my left hand, I have Poison Infusion, but using Seppuku for Poison, Rot, and Bleed. Using Sleep is especially good against the bigger enemies because they walk right into the Sleep Clouds. But for smaller enemies, we have a second option. The Parry into Critical Attacks. If you're trash at parrying, don't worry, I am too. The Buckler Parry is perfect because it'll leave them vulnerable for a critical attack, do the crit, and follow up with the Scarlet Rot and Poison routine. Wearing the super stylish Mushroom Crown, paired with the Rot Exaltation Talisman, the Critical Hit Boost Talisman, the Lord of Bloods Exaltation, and Great Jar. This build is a fun challenge with a unique playstyle. Moving forward, number 6, the Bloodborne Phantom Scythe. My trick here is using Cold Infusion to combo Frost and Bleed. The Scythe has innate blood loss. Yes, you could do bleed or coal infusion for extra bleed buildup, but if we can inflict frost, that will give us an extra 20% damage dealt to our target. Perfect for spanking bosses. So, the Scythe is not totally dog water. It has a unique heavy attack, good for applying status effects. And it's fun, I like Reaper builds. The Phantom Slice is underrated in my opinion. If you hold the Sprint button in a different direction, you can send your Phantom out to attack by itself while you stay behind safely. But you can use other weapon arts if you want. A very good option is Loretta Slash. Works well on a Scythe weapon, plus it's perfect for the Frost Infusion. Then as a ranged option, we have the Pulley Crossbow. I like it because of that triple shot. Hit him with that pew pew, the pew pew. The best bolts to use are firstly, the Blood Loss Bolts, and secondly, the Cold Bone Frost Bolts. This will help with both Frost and the Bleed Buildup. Very effective actually, like seriously, crossbows are underused. Perfect for an offhand ranged weapon. As a side weapon, you can whip out the Reduvia. It's pretty Bloodborne-esque, looking nasty, plus got that mean weapon art, adding even more bleed effect. So now we have plenty of blood loss, combined with extra damage from inflicting frost. We clapping cheeks, bro. We clapping frosty cheeks. 
This is a Dex and Arcane hybrid, the Lord of Blood, Shard of Alexander, Arrow Sting, and the last one is up to you, the Urge Tree Favor is always a good choice. On to number 5, Prince of Darkness. This is a hybrid build, combining the almighty powers of the Blazing Blood Flame and the Shining Psychotic Flames. Take a look at this bald, wrinkly guy drinking orange juice. There he is, drinking it, and... Oh. Got Vike's War Spear, the strongest Frenzy Flame weapon in my main hand. Then got Magwin's Spear, the strongest Blood Flame weapon in my left hand. Able to switch over quickly and use its infamous AoE weapon art. Attacking together leaves a beautiful array of red and yellow flames. So yeah, this is very much a hybrid. Vike's Spear scales with Faith and Dexterity, while Magwin's Spear scales with mainly Arcane and Strength. Because we have both Arcane and Faith, might as well use some incantations. Blood spells like Swarm of Flies and Blood Flame Talons are viable, plus you can use those Frenzy Flame incantations if you want. Frenzy Flame only works on humanoid enemies, so Frenzy attacks are really meant for PvP. It's certainly not the most optimized build, but I think it's pretty damn cool and fun. I like using the Regal Omen Barn here too, just to switch things up a bit, and because it goes with the aesthetic of the build. Shard of Alexander, Fire Scorpion Charm, the Thrust Counter Talisman, and Great Jar Arsenal. Moving on to number 4. So here we have the big guns. Because you gotta have a bow build and a unique weird build list, right? So, the Golem's Great Bow has the highest AR out of all bows, and when using the Golem Great Arrows, it creates an area of effect blast around the point of impact. So wherever you shoot this arrow, it'll create a small AoE wind explosion. This is very effective in PvP, because you can just shoot at their little feeties and you send them flying. But Radon's spears are also good to use, because they travel through the air faster. Plus, the Lion's Great Bow gives a 20% damage buff when using Radon's spear arrows. You can even wield it in your offhand and still get that buff. So wielding the Golem Great Bow by using both Radon spears and Golem Great arrows, switching between the two arrow types, is the strongest overall setup for a Great Bow. But if you really want the most powerful bow attack, you can dual wield two lines great bows. Yes, 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 this will give you double the buff to Radon Spears, making the unique weapon skill very strong. It is a beautiful sight to behold. Before we get to our big top three, I want to quickly go over an honorable mention. The Alien Dude. It's such a simple build, all you really do is dress up like an alien and use galaxy space themed weapons. Some are actually pretty strong, like the Meteoric Blade. This katana is underrated in my opinion. Or the Wing of Astel. Dual wield these bad boys and they can violate, especially with that weapon art. But most importantly, the Bastard Stars. Yeah, it's not the best weapon in the game, but definitely cool and definitely fun. This alien build is worth giving a try. Number 3, the Magma God. Whips recently got a decent buff and they feel much better to use. Ever since the days of RuneScape, using the Abyssal Whip, I've always liked them. And here I am, power stancing, with the Magma Whip in my main hand. The Magma Whip has the highest attack power out of all of them, and probably the best weapon art. Flinging around magma like I'm blowing boogies out my nose. Then offhand, I got my trusty Hoslow's Petal Whip. If you're a true Chad, you can go Keen Infused and enhance it with Fire Grease, baby. Back up. Back up, you foul beast. Get back. But if you are not a Chad and you are indeed Maidenless and just want the highest attack power, then you can use Flame Art Infusion instead. This will give the highest AR, especially after using all the fire damage buffs that we have. I'm using the Claw Talisman because whips have a beautiful jump attack, Shard of Alexander, Fire Scorpion Charm, and Urtree Favor. You will need decent armor because you definitely want a strong poise, so you can use that weapon art right in the middle of your enemies. Totally worth taking some damage. But hold up, hold up, you can create a very similar but even stronger Magma God build using the Magma Blades, using all the same fire buffs, power stancing dual curve swords. The strongest way to do this is to use a Magma Blade in the main hand. You only need one, just to use its insane weapon art, and then left hand have a flame art infused curve sword with Crag Blade, 
for even more damage. Like, look at that attack power, bro. Isn't it fucking beautiful? Lord have mercy, I'm about to bust. I can literally poop on Radagon within 20 seconds. This works in PvP also. The dual curve sword moveset is quite effective. Running attacks, jumping attacks, all that. And if you are enjoying this video so far, make sure to drop a like. Alright, let's keep moving forward with number 2. Pyro Knight Rider, a simple, full cosplay build that is actually viable and optimized. Full Knight Rider gear with the Knight Rider Glaive. And it just so happens that the Knight Rider Glaive is the strongest wielder of the Flaming Strike Ash of War. First of all, the Knight Rider Glaive has an S tier strength scaling. Secondly, Flaming Strike is a bullet type weapon art, which scales with strength. So yeah, the actual flames from the weapon art scale with your strength level. This means having a full level 80 strength will make the setup very strong. Long range, wide reach, and heavy poise damage. Very effective against smaller enemies who stagger. Like this stanky ass bitch right here, Melania. So yeah, this is an actually viable cosplay build. And what's great about it is that you really only need a high strength level. So you can use all your other stats left over for faith or vigor, whatever you want. Shard of Alexander, Fire Scorpion Charm, Bull Goats, and Crimson Medallion. So if you're like me and thought the Knight Rider was Big Daddy, then here you go my friend, have at it. And finally, the last build of the day, Armored Tank. Great shield in your left hand and your firepower in your right. Using this big ass rock as a shield, we can defend ourselves against any attack. Then, we wielding Pyro Faith as firepower, casting any fire type spells you like. I'm using plenty of Black Flame spells, can also use giant flame incantations. The black blade is crazy strong with a high faith level too. Plus, I like the crucible tail whip for close range attack. This requires a certain type of playstyle. Somewhat patient and decisive with your attacks. Instead of the omega stone shield, you can also use the eye shield. This is literally a tank cannon. It really slaps enemies doing like 2-3k damage. I also like carrying the Cypher Pata in my offhand if I want to switch to it for a melee weapon. It scales with faith and weighs nothing, absolutely zero, so might as well have it there. So yeah, you want to prioritize your endurance and faith levels. So go ahead and leave a comment with your thoughts and opinions on these builds here. Did you like them? Do you think they're dumb? Alrighty, thank you for watching my friends, I'll talk to you later. Somewhere.